I wanted total and complete forgiveness in my heart. I prayed for it every day. I asked God to please help me. I got very emotional towards God. Honestly, maybe that's a time when I was like- Angry at God. I was like, yo. The hardest person I've had to forgive has been myself. Yeah. And welcome back to the Fortitude Podcast. We're your hosts, Micah and Sarah. And if this is your first time, welcome. Can't wait for you to hear what we're about to say. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I lost train of thought. I thought you were going to say what we're about <laughs> and stop there. <laughs> and if you're returning, thank you for being on this ride with us. Yeah. We greatly appreciate you. Very much so. So uh, like and subscribe and do all those things and, and you know... It just uh, means the world to us. It does. How are you doing? I'm great. 17 weeks held, holding your little belly oh, over there. Bowl full of jelly as bowl I affectionately refer to my belly these days. <laughs> like Santa Claus, yeah. bowl full of jelly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it is funny when you like, when you laugh, it yeah. kind of shakes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what inspired it. <laughs> just looking down and laughing at me like, what the heck is why, happening? Why, why is that jiggling? Wow, that is moving and grooving. <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, that's funny it's fun i fell off my chair today you did the yeah. very chair you're sitting in now yep i leaned back <laughs> <laughs> i was reclining having a nice stretch and slowly toppled right on over interesting i mean you must have just had your weight way far back I guess too far back because it reclines a good amount. It does. I, I literally it can't does. recline because I mean, you, it won't you, go. But you can lay pretty much flat. Yeah, and so I think I I just had my your body weight was yeah. on the back, and it just like it felt like it was in slow motion. It looked like it was in slow motion, <laughs> even though I was like kind of jumping out of my chair, being like trying to help, even though I don't know what I could do. <laughs> Clearly nothing. <laughs> yep, and then just, and just slowly and over. Yeah, you, you weren't you're not that far from the ground no. once you're back there. I'm just glad nothing broke. Yeah, I would have been pretty uh, you know disappointed i would have something been broke on sad. this yeah same because you can't really get the same word it's but like I'm completely sold also out. glad that you were okay oh sure mainly yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> you would didn't have been. hit your head or anything. yeah yeah that's true i'm still nimble you are yeah you're very nimble i'm basically like spider-man wow i have those kind of reflexes yeah spoiler alert oh, oh my i was about to say spoiler alert but then it got ruined by <laughs> my mouth. <laughs> by your big old tongue <laughs> yeah. taking up all the space. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today, Sarah? Well, I've, Elizabeth I don't Wallace. Know if, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I have kind of had it on my heart to talk about forgiveness. Oof. All um, right. I think it can be a hard, can be a hard topic. I think it's important in today's society. Yeah. Because we live in a very polarizing world and a world that is very much about like me. Don't walk all over me. I'm not going to let and you fairness. treat me that way. Yeah. Yes. And like, that's not fair, which mm -hmm. I had the head of my college dance department literally like she had a few, like a handful of things that she would say all the time. And one of them was life is not fair. Get over it. Okay, I mean, yeah. And, and it's, it's just true. like, that's so basic, but yep. it's true. Like life is not fair. Not everyone. Some people are going to have harder, harder time than others. And that's just the, the way, way that it that is. It is. Yep. And I've had many petulant moments in my life where I've been like, it's not fair. Like mm -hmm. I work harder than that person yet. They're making more progress than me. It's not fair. Right. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Get over it. And I, I like, I think having that repeated to me over and over when I was, 18 to 22 <laughs> it it sunk in um but all that to say that it's i think forgiveness and now everything that i'm going to talk about is going to be through like the lens of being a christian because yeah somebody just, with somebody with the faith yeah, yeah. that's just my how Personal i look at belief. things yeah yep. and so i was listening to something the other day that was talking about how like I think it was Tim Keller who was talking about it. And he was saying that he was like, God is just like, but he's not always fair. Mm. Interesting. What, uh, in, what does that mean? In the meaning in our human perspective, we think it's not fair. Oh, oh, I see. But God's ultimate plan. Justice is always, he's always just mm. and justice and fairness are two different things. 
Mm. I thought that was interesting. It is interesting because it's, it is, it is difficult because as a human, you, you want things to be fair. I mean, even as a kid, you're like that person, like, why is that kid at get, he got more candy than me. Right. He got, but you know, yeah. And it, it starts very, very young. Of course. I feel like yeah. where the fairness thing is always, you know, I get this and you get this, but you can't have more because that's not fair. Yep. But that is just how life goes. Yeah. But also it's like, that's always just a moment in your life. Yeah. It's typically like, it's not fair that this person has blank, blank, blank and blank, but you also don't know what their life is like. You know, you don't live their life. You don't Correct. you don't walk in their shoes. Correct. It's pretty easy to see, you know, uh, somebody who seems like they have everything and Correct. live a, a pretty great life. Financially has yeah. just been given everything, hasn't really had to work for it, yeah. and gets to travel the world and have you know and has ab- abundance of money and yeah. gets all the girls and gets all the guys and you know whatever is is beautiful is is has been born beautiful and it can be hard when you're working maybe two or three jobs mm-hmm. to provide for your family mm-hmm. and see that of course and just be like Very. what the yeah. heck why? like why was i born here yep. ultimately you c- you could say well, that's not fair. And yeah. maybe it isn't. Yeah. But ultimately, what can you do about it? Right. You kind of have to live the life that you're like that you're dealt with. Right. Make make the most of it. And you just don't know what could happen. Life can change In an so much. Yep. You know, maybe that's your moment right now, but then you meet the right people or you put yourself in a position to um you know, where a door opens up and you it totally takes you in a different trajectory that yeah. is built for your calling and your purpose yep. that that other person could never have yep. because maybe they're not relatable in that way. Yeah. And you just ultimately just don't know the demons that the per, that, that person is maybe dealing with, dealing with or yeah. fighting. And ultimately <laughs> it's always easier said than of done. Course. And of you course. can always be like, well, I would love to deal with being a millionaire. Right. You know, I would, I, I would love to deal, deal with yep. having an abundance of money and, you know, and, yeah. and being able to be financially independent and all this stuff. Yes. Cause you know, what was me right compared to somebody who is actually stressed financially and, and yeah. going through it, you know, maybe yeah. with, um, relationship wise. Yeah. Were you about to say something? I was just, I had just remembered that I was, I misquoted. It was Craig Groeschel who was talking about forgiveness being forgiveness is not fair Oh, and, and God is not fair. I just wanted to give the proper credit. And what he was saying was God is also not fair because God does not give us what we deserve. Instead, we've been saved and eventually we get to spend eternity with him. I don't know if I followed that one. If God were fair, he would punish us as a sinners that we are. Oh, I see. I see. But he, he's not, he's not like our ultimate, salvation isn't necess- isn't fair we don't deserve it we haven't earned mm. it i guess if you were fair yeah then all of us would be dead right that's, uh, eventually <laughs> or pun- that's, you know punished you that's know, what he was for- saying with the difference between justice and fair right right and that's also i think something that bringing it back to forgiveness is when if we're wronged by someone it's not our job to to be their punisher hmm. god's the one who works out that justice down the line yeah Maybe it's not how we would like it to be. Because sometimes when people hurt us, we then in turn want them to suffer mm-hmm. because we're humans and that's kind of how we're wired. But um, it's, he's the ultimate, he's the ultimate judge. So how have you gone through different, like, I guess, gone through your forgiveness journey just in your personal life? Because well, I know you've had a couple big ones. Uh, one being... Your husband or your previous husband Mm -hmm. who came out to you and you kind of had to go on a, you've talked about this before, but I think it's important to, you know, in case somebody hasn't seen the other ones to talk about that. Yeah. I think there's, and I've been, when I kind of had forgiveness on my heart as something to talk about on here, I started to really like dive into it a bit and like study it a little bit more. I haven't done that in a while because I haven't had anything to forgive. Um, so it hasn't been like a big lately. It has not been a big focus of my 
like my faith walk or something that I've been studying intensely. Um, but well, so when I started to dive into it, it was almost everything I was listening to was talking about how there's different, you know, forgiving others is one piece of forgiveness. Sometimes we need to forgive God. Sometimes we're angry at God and we need to forgive him. Um, and then sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. And there are different processes and things that allow us to work on the journeys for each of those things. And they're all different. Mm. And so for me, when it came to that situation in regards to my ex and when he came out and all of that stuff, like obviously that was me forgiving him Mm -hmm. for just not knowing who he was. And then I was just hurt as a byproduct of his own journey. Yeah. Right. He wasn't doing it on purpose. Right. Um, and so that going on that journey, but then I also had to forgive myself because I felt like an idiot. And I was like, how could you have, how could you have gotten yourself into this situation? Mm. So then there was an element of forgiving myself as well. And I think a lot of the times, like I've also had to forgive myself for just things in my past. Like none of us are perfect people, right? you know? And like when I was a, like a teenager into my early twenties, I was such a huge people pleaser. And that led to me hurting people because I would tell them what they wanted to hear versus what was true. Mm. And a lot of the time that manifested in like my dating life as a teenager where I would just like lead someone on or I would date multiple people at the same time or whatever. Cause you're like, afraid to hurt. Cause the I was person. afraid to hurt the person. Yeah, right. And ultimately they did end up getting hurt, you know, yeah, in, in right, every yeah. situation truth like always that, comes out, of course. Yeah. So that like my character, when I was that, in that phase yeah, of life. I'm still, I, I still have like five people, you know, that I still need to break it off with. I'm that like, you know, <laughs> I just don't know how to tell them. <laughs> you're, you're pretty like publicly married yeah. <laughs> at this point. So, <laughs> um, also like we're literally together practically 24 yeah. seven. So <laughs> that was that- a little joke. It was a joke. <laughs> Somebody's going to take that and run with it. Miss me. <laughs> um, but because of that and like just the way that I had cowardice because of my people pleasing tendencies when I was basically like 17 through 20, I, that was something that I also had to forgive myself mm-hmm. for because as I grew in maturity and I grew in character, you know, you look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe that I treated those people that way. And who I am now is someone who would not not do those things that 18 year old me would do which we we hope that that's that that's how we grow and develop and change right right you know and and mature and especially just like the 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 relationship i have with god now that i didn't have then so that was another kind of like and just the maturity yeah that you have now right because of being older right but even things like that that even it's like okay i was yeah i was a teenager but it still was a reflection of my character that wasn't what I wish it would have been. Sure. You know, so, and then losing my brother, that was a a journey of like, I wouldn't say in my mind, like forgiving God, because I honestly Mm. didn't really ever experience and I wasn't ever angry at God for whatever reason. Um, And God doesn't sin. So technically, we never really have anything to forgive him for, but it can, we can still feel angry towards him. And like we do, we are holding a grudge against him. Right. That's something that Craig Rochelle was also talking about is like, we can feel that we're holding a grudge towards God. And in those situations, we need to pour out, like he can, he can handle, he already knows how we're feeling Yeah, right. and he can handle us expressing those things to him. So just pouring those things out to him and continuing to show up in faith, even if we're not, what we're, what we're hoping for hasn't happened. And he used examples like, you know, hoping for a spouse or hoping for a baby or hoping for a a career progression that isn't happening the way that you thought it would Mm. or whatever it may be. I mean, I think forgiveness is for you. Yeah. Anyway, Mm -hmm. forgiveness is for you more than the other person. Definitely. Like somebody, somebody hurts you in some way, you holding on to bitterness towards that person isn't really hurting that person. No. Like that person is going about their life, has no idea. And right. all you're doing is poisoning yourself every right. single day right. with, with your unforgiveness. And not to say that it's like 
an easy thing right that you can just be like okay well then i'll just forgive him yeah. and then that so i can get get rid of this bitterness and move on with my life yeah because well talk about your journey with that like how easy was it with your are you gonna get there i well i just wanted to add something to what oh, you okay. said before yeah. i lost my train of thought um i was diving back into the book forgiveness oh yeah by rodney hogue if i mispronounced that i apologize um that i read back when we first started counseling with bill and he was talking about how yeah the reason most people don't most people struggle with forgiveness is because they think it's punishing the person who hurt them and they think that forgiving is, is letting that person off the hook and he talks about how one of the greatest lies that's a huge lie from the enemy like a great lie from the enemy is that we are punishing the offender by holding on to unforgiveness because it's not true it only rots us from the inside right yeah the famous saying uh, unforgiveness is like drinking poison exactly. hoping the other person dies exactly <laughs> and it's so true because when we hold on to those things it's not just it those things manifest physically you know in, in in different ways think of a time where you were so angry at somebody and you didn't like get it out you didn't you, you know you didn't work through that or process it yeah. just think about what that does to you physically oh my gosh, to you, hold it in you can feel like the chemistry inside of you changing yeah. when you when you ha when you feel like that mm -hmm. big time yeah oh, what same thing with like jealousy and envy yes I'm speaking right from the heart from that with that yeah I still struggle with that at times since we're so very much into social media like that's you know part of what we do mm -hmm. I find myself doing the same thing where it's just like man this this uh, these creators are you know just growing much more than we are even though it seems like we're doing you know we're putting in a lot of our time and a lot of work and a lot of effort and mm -hmm. like what's that doesn't seem quote unquote fair mm -hmm. right yeah. and uh and then the jealousy and the envy and and then i just i have to i have to like stop and and uproot that yeah in the moment because you feel the chemistry changing in your body absolutely in a not so positive way yeah yeah and it's just not worth it because again, like yeah. we don't know anything about their journey and we don't know no, what God has, uh, has in store for us. It's also like, do you, do you truly wish ill on the right. people? Right. Cause like, of course not. A lot, you know, it, you don't, uh, you know, it, it's like when you really think about it, it's like, well, yeah. do you wish these people that you actually like, Yeah. do you wish that they would be, be unsuccessful? less successful right. and unsuccessful like, and just not. not no that, that, that you know when you talk it out yeah it's like oh no i don't want that mm -hmm. i just want to be successful as well yeah. <laughs> or like as right. successful you know yeah. it's kind of that thing and i think that, that goes back to in one of our podcasts that we did with justin and amanda where he was talking about like comparing the work that you're doing yeah not comparing results and, and anything else yeah right being like oh i'm i'm doing just as much and so and that's all that i can do mm -hmm. yeah comparing comparing the the do yeah the doing yeah and the the effort as yeah. opposed to the results yeah yeah what did you ask me before we went off on this your forgiveness journey so like oh, sure. how how was that for you um say with your ex-husband you know yeah. he comes out to you uh, was that like kind of like uh quick process was it a long process what did that look like mm -hmm. you know what does forgiving somebody look like yeah totally and also in in that book forgiveness he was saying how there's two parts to forgiveness one part is forgiving and the second part is like rebuilding your heart so that that bitterness can't find another place to go like mm. um doing the necessary work to rebuild maybe a, some trust that was broken or you know what whatever it may be um and then there was something, there was something else along those lines, like that I wanted to mention. Please hold. <laughs> oh, I started too high. Let me go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh. This was so. And we're back. This was also, this was, this was something that Tim Keller said. And he said that forgiveness is granted before it's felt. So when you grant forgiveness, you're, it's a commitment that like, I'm going to, I'm going to not, I'm not going to take revenge or wish ill or desire to make you pay for what you did to me. 
I'm not going to keep bringing this up to if it's someone who's in your life regularly to them, not something that you're going to keep continue bringing up to other people. And most importantly, it's not something you're going to keep bringing up with yourself Mm. in your thoughts and on a day-to-day basis. Cause when you do that, you you can't, how do you, how do you ever let it go when you're having that conversation with yourself in your head day after day, after day, after day. And I thought that was really powerful. The forgiveness is granted before it's felt. And I actually, in my own experience, that's exactly what it was. It was like that I decided that I wanted to forgive. I knew from the moment, from the moment that he told me, because I could see how much it was hurting him to hurt me. Right. That, and I wasn't even really angry in that moment. I was confused and hurt, sure. but I wasn't angry. Yeah. I didn't experience anger until a little bit later down the line. Yeah. And, but I had already decided, I had already committed to the fact that I was going to forgive him and that it was going to be fine and that we were going to be able to have reconciliation in our relationship. I already decided, I decided that at the moment that he told me. But like, then, so then, but then what was the process right, of right. going through that? Because you I'm can saying. say it, but right. then if you still have these ill feelings towards right. somebody, have you actually forgiven? Right. And that's, and that's what I'm saying is like, I, it's granted before it's actually experienced and felt. Okay. So, and so yes, I made the decision that I was committed to forgiving and that it wasn't going to be like, it wasn't going to be something that was uh, used as leverage in a, in a future friendship mm. with him. Sure. Sure. And so then I just prayed <laughs> because, because I was angry and there were times when I did. What caused you to get angry later on? Seeing um, him like happy yeah. with somebody else, right? Yeah. yeah. And also just like. And seeing maybe a different person that, that you didn't experience in your relationship. Yeah. I think that was a big part of it. And just like how alone I felt. Sure. After, because you know, we were, wor- we were working, we were doing the show and all that happened. Mm-hmm. So I had like such a major distraction. And so I think after the tour ended and we came home, like I literally left with one life and I walked back into a completely different one. Yeah. I, I walked into a completely different apartment that my friends had, my sweet girlfriends had like gotten for us so mm-hmm. that it was there when I came back and I literally left, like I left what was my home and I never, and I never went back. Mm-hmm. And so once I came back and like all that started to hit me, then I was like, I, yeah, I felt very, I just felt very alone. Yeah. Makes sense. And that's what made me angry it was because I was like, this is not nothing that I did. It's not my doing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And to like, obviously we were also dating. Like I also had, we were also dating at the time. So um, I wasn't like faulting him for, for dating someone else. Right. Yeah. It was just like, I was just angry because I don't like being sad. Like I hate <laughs> being sad. Are you sad now? I'm not sad oh. now. I'm not sad now. I am just pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm not, I'm really not sad at all. Um, it just when I like you're just I, like you're just thinking about the emotions yes, that you had and yes. it's making you emotional thinking about the emotions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't get it because I'm I'm not hormonal, <laughs> but I get it. Yeah, and it's so interesting to think back on that time and like I don't know. I it's almost like I want to like give my self. Then I'm like, oh, I want to give myself a big hug. Yeah, like yeah. I know. Yeah, I know how like just how, how pain, how painful that was. Um, but so I don't know. I lost my train of thought talking about hormones. Um, (laughs) so, well, so, so what got you through uh, that Yeah. and how did you like, so how did you progress with your forgiveness? Yeah. Just a lot of praying, a lot of praying and yeah, daily. Mm -hmm. And, I really wanted to. And so I think that was a big part of it is like, I really, I really wanted to, like there was no part of me that wanted to hold on 
to any of the bitterness or or the hurt. Right. Um, because I do think sometimes people do, and we've talked about this before. I do sometimes think people there's a little piece of them that wants to hold on to that because then it allows them to be the victim in certain situations. And if you want to hold on to those things, you're never going to be able to let go of them or fully forgive because there's a piece of you that's like, but then I have to take accountability for whatever, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, or responsibility or be have everything in my life be my own fault versus having this little thing I can pin it on. Mm. Um, and just keep bringing that up whenever yeah. I want some pity. Yes. And I didn't want that. I didn't want that at all. I wanted total and complete forgiveness uh, in, in my heart. And so I, I just prayed for it. I prayed for it every day. I read scripture about forgiveness. I asked God to please help me. Um, I got very emotional towards God. Honestly, maybe that's a time when I was like, angry at angry god, at god yeah. where i was like yeah. yo can you please help like i cannot do this on my own and i need your help and it's taking too long in my opinion <laughs> how how long did um, it take from like when he came like out to you a, to a year basically basically a full year yeah of you praying every day yeah and asking for forgive like at, asking god to uproot the bitterness and the and the um you know, whatever the negativity that you feel towards him. Yeah. And it took a full year, a full year. Yep. And then what, I mean, how, how did it, how did you know it happened? Like when, when you feel like you were, I guess, past it. Yeah. I mean, in my, in, in that instance, it was really like a miraculous instance because it was just one of those things where I was like pouring my heart out to God and was just like, I am, so tired of feeling this way and I'm so tired of having and and also it was right around that time that I really started to have a lot of ill will and so I was like this is not this is gross yeah and I do not like this right and ill will specifically towards like him having a successful relationship with like this new person that he was dating and so I was just like angry about that right I was like wishing that it would go, that it would go poorly. He told me he was bringing him home to his family for Christmas. And I was like, well, I hope it goes terribly in my head. I didn't say <laughs> yeah. that out loud, obviously. Can you imagine? I hope um, it goes terribly. But I was like, I hope your family does not like him. You know, just yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, ew. Right. Don't, don't. Yep. Like, why are you having those thoughts? Don't have those thoughts. And it's so funny because... I was at, I was in a place where, so the guy, the guy who my ex was now dating, um, he uh, would rehearse at this place in California and I was touring with Elf and we were in this place that he had rehearsed in many, many times. And so he was super familiar with the area. Mm. And so he actually had texted me like some recommendations for the area and we'd we'd met and interacted b- before then a, f- a few times um so i remember meeting him the first time and oh we left and i was like he's like one of the nicest people i've ever met <laughs> i know and that's the, that's the thing it's like, like the moment i met him oh i was gosh, like she's like well, so nice yeah i'm like well he's clearly a great person yeah and i'm not mad at him of course I can, t- he's definitely, uh, he's clearly a great person. Right. Yep. And he, he is, um, Isn't that funny. I feel like that is so, <laughs> that is so relatable and common where, where people are just like, uh, well, you see that in comedies or, yes. or whatever. It's just like, yeah. it's like, Oh, I hate him. Like, why do you hate him? He's like, cause he's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> he's just so nice. Yeah. yeah. And so, but he had been texting me because he's very kind. He had been like offering me some recommendations because we were in this place in California for two weeks. And so mm-hmm. he was like, you know, if you want fun stuff to do, like here's recommendations. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the first time that we'd interacted outside of, of Nick being there. Like it was a conversation just between the two of us. And something about that conversation coupled with me like pouring out my heart to God was like, it, it, he felt to me like he, like just a normal human being 
for the first time mm. versus like, like the this enemy person attacking that, you yes, or something. Like this yeah. person that caused sure. all this pain yeah. that I'd been right. going through. Yep. Because he didn't cause it. Right. And I knew that logically, mm -hmm. but you know, you look for things to pin things on. Of course. And we're humans and it, we're emotional. So <laughs> that was the first time that I was like, that I saw him as, as if I had met him in different circumstances. So I think that it's just funny how that was the timing of that. I had been praying, but like God knew that there would be that instant, that instance mm -hmm. where we were having that conversation. And I would have that realization and I would pray to God about that. And he would then suck the bitterness out of my heart. And, and so that's what you felt, right? And that's what I felt. Yeah. That's what I felt. I was literally on my knees praying to him because especially after that interaction, I was like, I actually really like this person and I don't mm. want to have ill will toward this person because I actually want good for this person. Right. But there's still like this poison in my heart that I'm wishing ill. Mm. And so the, like the juxtaposition of that was so it became very, it, it just became so real in that moment because of the interaction that, that we had. And then I was praying to God about that specific new kind of experience I was having. And then it was like, literally like he took a little, you know, I've said this before, like yeah. a little dust buster vacuum and just like sucked it right out. Like and I was like, yeah. like the <laughs> like, like, or he had like a pack on his back. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was, I, think, I don't think I've ever imagined God <laughs> with a ghost busters like outfit in a pack on his back Me neither. <laughs> before, but Me now, neither. now I can see it. It's fun. Yeah. And after that moment, I didn't, I, I didn't ever have any ill will or anger towards either of them ever again. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool, but also a testament of you just continuing to go on that journey and how that's, that could be the case for, for some people. It maybe it's even longer than a year. Uh, maybe yeah. it's longer. Like, I, you know, right. cause different things that happen to different people, you know, some things are probably a lot harder to, to forgive Absolutely, than, because than other things. When people do have malice towards you and maybe they're, they're hurting you on purpose. purpose yep. Or, a, or, or worse, like somebody that you love, they hurt them. You know, I feel like that yeah. if somebody were to hurt you, whether it's physically or especially physically um, or obviously emotionally, that's just like out of malice and just you know, evil, mm -hmm. I would have, I would have a hard time with that. Yeah. And I would have a, I think a really hard time forgiving somebody for that because yeah, you know, you see those movies of, of, you know, somebody that, I mean, this is dramatic, but like kills the, the, the wife or whatever of a yeah. husband. It's just like, and then you're just expected to, Oh, is, Oh, there's a book on that. There's the shack. Mm. Yeah. Or, yeah. Have you read that? I have, and I've seen the movie, but it's not. You don't remember it's it? It's not really. It's not um, clear I in my it's, mind. It's his daughter yes. that gets murdered. Yes. Okay. And then it's basically his, it's about a, a journey of forgiveness and yeah. him forgiving and uh, this this killer. And it's just like, oh my goodness. I That, that would be difficult. Yeah. That would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I just like. That's where personal beliefs, I don't know how you can do that alone. Right. I don't know how you can go through that and actually truly forgive somebody without God. I don't either. And believe, believing in, you know, uh, a either. higher power. Yeah. And, and Tim Keller was actually talking about, I know this was Tim Keller because I'm looking at my notes right now, how like forgiveness is a fruit of the spirit. So if we think that we can attain that fruit with only worldly tools, we cannot. Mm. And the only we need tools of the spirit to attain the fruits of the spirit. We need God to, to have all the fruits of the spirit in our life. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness being one of those things. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really powerful. Yeah. Cause we do try to do things on our own with our own power and our, of our own will. And it's just like a lot of the times, especially forgiveness, we are not, we're not strong enough because we're humans yeah, and we're emotional right. and we're not strong enough to do that on our own. Yep. I no mean, matter what the situation is. When, when I think about forgiveness journey, like the hardest person I've had to forgive has been myself. Yeah. Which is fortunate 
that I haven't, you know, I, I haven't had anybody in my life that has really like done something that has been so difficult yeah. to forgive. But yeah. that has been something I think that that's been the hardest of, you know, it's that Paul, Paul, uh, apostle Paul saying of just like, I, I want to do the, these things, but I don't, and I don't want to do these things, but I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm obviously paraphrasing, but it's, it's that thing over and over and over mm-hmm. of, you know, every day or just like daily sin or di- different things that I'm just like, ah, and yeah. like then the guilt and the shame that come along with that. And then, you know, for, you know, asking for forgiveness, forgiving myself and just being like, man, <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, do you like, do you ever, do you ever get sick of me, God, where I'm just like, I'm asking for forgiveness for the same thing over and over and over and you obviously know everything, so you know I'm probably going to do this again. <laughs> so, like, do you even, like, take it seriously? Yeah. And there's sometimes where I, I, I feel that way when I'm, at like, asking, where I'm just like, please forgive me. And in my head, I'm like, but I'm, I'm, prob- like, I'm probably just going to do this again. So I'm like, is this really going to be accepted? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does. Makes complete sense. I think it's ultimately that's very human. Yeah. It's just how, how we are. We're not perfect. And I think, I, I do think that that part of, I think that's in Romans. It's, it's Romans. It's, yeah. I think it, seven. It's Romans really, seven. it is so powerful when it's like, why do Even I Apostle do Paul, the things is, that I do not want like, to do? Yeah. I think that's just, we're just humans, mm-hmm. but that's the beauty of God knowing that from the get go, knowing that number one, we would just like, I mean, I'm reading the old Testament. So it's just like, absolute mayhem going on <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild ride yeah. old testament's a wild ride um so but then beyond that after you know his plan for jesus so that he can still spend eternity with the people that continuously turn away from him yeah. continuously right and he knew he knew with his plan that it, jesus was going to make the ultimate sacrifice so he could still spend eternity with us even though he knew that we were going to do the things that we don't want to do over and over and over again are the entire time that we live on earth. And that becomes very overwhelming sometimes Mm -hmm. when it's like, Whoa, that's (laughs) some crazy love Mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. But that's also why forgiveness is, that's the ultimate example of forgiveness is our heavenly father. And so uh, that's why with that foundation, I think forgiveness is much easier than right. if, if you don't have that foundation. Um, and, and I, but I, I, I do, I know exactly what you, what you mean. And I think that's just like the, the human experience mm-hmm. is like, man, I just make repeated mistakes constantly. Right. And it's just, I guess it just depends on, your heart posture. Yes, I would. I would say so. Because if every night you're you're kind of like, all right, time to wipe the slate clean again, <laughs> which it kind of feels that way sometimes. Where I'm just like, you know, like when I ask God to forgive me of my sins, I'm just like, all right, I'm clean again, but now I'm about to dirty up the slate again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, I used to be as a kid. Um, I used to be like worried that if I like, if I didn't ask forgiveness and I died before I did that, yeah. like I'd go to hell. Mm. And, and so I was always kind of paranoid after like <laughs> doing anything of just being like, God, forgive me. You know, like after every <laughs> little thing, yeah. <laughs> which I don't know where that came from. I, I mean, I, I didn't, I was never like scared taught, into yeah, that taught or taught that. that. It's just, you know, as kids, it's just, we hear one thing and then it's like, it becomes, <laughs> yeah, our minds yeah, go wild, becomes something else. Yeah. But I, I, it's all, I think it's like, you know, we want to grow our character and develop our character and God knows the desires of our hearts to grow and, and change. And I think that's what counts. We do our best, you know, like I, am I able to go like all day without having like a judgmental thought? No, probably not. Right. I don't think so. Yeah. And so it's like those things of, you know, continue to, if you say when you, when you pray at night, what do you say about like, 
Oh, uh, our character. Uh, 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 like uproot and get rid of any character defects. Yes. That we may have. Yes. Somebody asked, well, you were talking about how you're reading the Old Testament. Somebody from Belgium asked, actually, in our DMs, um, if they were to start reading the Bible, where they should start. And I'd recommend the New Testament. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Matthew, for Mar- sure Ma- New <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, which are the Gospels. It talks about Jesus's um, life. And mm-hmm. I would start there, for sure. Yeah. They're the most digestible, I would say. Yeah, and, uh, 100%. And there's just a lot of really great principles in there. So good. And so I would start there if you're new to, to reading. Absolutely. And you'll, you'll learn a and lot about different, forgiveness. And, and, in there. and, and when it comes to like interpretations or like, mm, there are different like translations. Think, yeah. Tr- translations. I would say NIV or the new living translation are mm-hmm. both good ones and e- easier to digest. Yeah. I would agree. Forgiveness can also be very difficult because it's so countercultural. Mm-hmm. because forgiveness is uh, basically like self denial you know, of being like, okay, I'm going to decide that I'm going to let this go, that I'm going to let this person off the hook, that I'm going to let myself off the hook, whatever it may yep. be. And I kind of said it's this. Re- it's, it's more, it's more that. It's yeah. more about letting yourself off the hook because yeah. you forgiving somebody for doing something terrible to you does not mean you have to like then tolerate them. Right. And put, and just like, put yourself in that same position and let them continue to For walk sure. all over yeah. you or have any kind of relationship with them. Or, or if you do have to have a relationship with them, you know, you can have proper boundaries right. in place. Yes. Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. I think sometimes people think that you forgiving somebody means that, okay, just go back to, you just like, you like have to just happened. forget and forget that never yeah. happened. And then they can just continue to abuse you. Yeah. Basically. It's like, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. It's get, it's letting yourself off the hook and, and freeing you more than anything. Yeah. It's what about forgiving a spouse? I feel like you've had to forgive me more than I've had to forgive you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was, well, first things that come to mind is like when you, you found porn on my phone. I feel like that was probably a journey that you had to go with go through and forgiving me yeah through that yeah yeah i did yeah but that was kind of at the same it was at the same time of when i was like i think we were like counseling with bill already at that time maybe luckily or else that probably would have been Um, a lot worse (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) so i was kind of already on a journey of forgiveness you're like put it on the pile literally literally, i was just like let me add it to my journal (laughs) <laughs> let's go Yikes. one more thing whoopsie um or maybe that was right before i started working with bill because i do distinctly remember writing about that in my forgiveness journal sure you know I that mean, he yeah. then reads back to you out loud and you're That's like brutal. and you're like oh my gosh <laughs> like can't look him in the eye on the zoom yeah. screen like yeah jeez louise um but i don't know honestly i don't remember it being that difficult no no, like, was it hurtful? Yeah. But I, I don't know. I was just kind of like, again, I'm like, I knew it's not like you were trying to hurt me. Yeah. Um, And I think because you were so, you became very open about your journey with that. I think that also helped me because I could understand more. Mm-hmm. And your your willingness to be transparent and to express what you were struggling with helped me just be like oh this is just like like a human struggling with something yeah and like let me just partner with him and praying that he'll overcome it and then yeah. at the same time like honestly i cared more about that mm. than my own than my own whatever like what it did self image wise or anything yeah in that moment, I don't think, I don't know if, my self-image was pretty much already in the trash at that point, so <laughs> it didn't really, it didn't really. Didn't have anywhere else to go. Yeah, It yeah, was just already. It was already bottom of the barrel, so <laughs> it didn't really impact my self-image. What impacted my self-image was 
the time that I accidentally opened up Ugh, your journal. And that, and that was, that was not was awful. Yeah. That, and again, that was not, it was you, like one of the few times that you saw me cry. <laughs> yeah. But that was you going through your, your journey of the yeah. things that you needed to work through. Yeah. And it wasn't meant for me to see. And I wasn't trying to see it. I just literally opened up your computer and it was there. Yeah. So I wasn't trying, I wasn't trying to snoop, but the thing is, is when I saw it, I realized that was a big piece of me unlocking just how bad my self image was. Mm. And the fact that not even that necessarily, I, I, I had kind of realized that eventually after talking to Bill a few times, I was like, okay, wow, here we, yeah, there's some issues here. Mm. Um, but more so the value that I put on what I look like, my body, mm-hmm. et cetera, all of that. Sure. Like pulling my worth from those things. So that was a really big thing that helps me overcome that and so i believe that i was supposed to i'm glad you saw it then that i was supposed (laughs) to see that i was supposed to see those things because it put in front of my eyes like because i was so upset i mean when i saw i was too because i was just like that was not meant for you i don't even remember what it said at this point i do and i'm not gonna repeat it (laughs) 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 i'm glad you don't remember basically like wishing things about my body were different and like kind of like repenting of those thoughts. That's, that's, yes. that's my memory. That's, that's, that's my memory of what I, yeah. of what I read. And I was just so hurt. And I mean, rightfully so, but also yeah. it had nothing. To, it was definitely, it was not meant for you. I was like, I was having to, you know, I, I was going through that whole, right. those, all those issues yes. with myself right. through journaling it through and well with, with our counselor yeah um so that i could uproot that and of course. move on and and so that was but i guess you're if it helped you then great <laughs> and ultimately <laughs> it's like i was grateful that you were going on that journey and that you were you were willing to to get that transparent because mm-hmm. putting those things those things down and being like I'm struggling with these lustful thoughts. Like right. that's, that's difficult Yeah, to write that down and be that open about it. Like with another man, like that's very difficult. I would imagine. It, it definitely is. But I, I, for me, I cared more about getting like moving through, like uh, getting over it Yeah, and like actually overcoming these things. Yeah, I cared more about that than the uncomfortability of admitting it yeah. because in my mind, I was like, this is this is really embarrassing, but I'm probably not alone. For sure. In in, in this, yeah. in, in this struggle. Yeah. I'm I'm sure this is not the first time he's hearing this. Yeah. <laughs> so I care more about overcoming these things than to just like what? Uh uphold my image. Right. My like perfect image. Yeah. That I don't struggle with these things. Yeah. Because that's just kind of BS. Yeah. And so I'd rather, I'd rather get it out, get out in the open so that I can start to work through this and, and overcome this because things that are hidden continue to grow yes, and do. then they never, they never get weeded out. 100%. So, but, and I knew all of that, which is why ultimately like in the moment was I hurt? I don't even remember how, how I responded. Like, I don't even know if I got angry or if I was just like crying, probably you were just crying. crying. Yeah. Yeah. My default, which was, pretty much everything. I think the only time you've cried <laughs> that i remember (laughs) hilarious um oh outside the time like about uh outside 30 minutes ago currently still sniffling (laughs) from from tearing up two seconds ago um (laughs) but you cry for both of us yeah sure i can carry that cross for us um but i ultimately i because i was like why am i so hurt and that really led me on Mm. the journey of like, I've attached so much worth and value to this. Like, why do I give a rip what, what anyone else thinks Mm -hmm. about my body? If I feel good in my own body, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's like, and even Bill, like Bill helped me walk, walk through those things. And so it was, it turned out to be honestly very, like it was helpful for me because it was really, my response to it was really eye opening. Yeah. So I didn't, I honestly didn't necessarily feel I had anything to forgive because I was just grateful that you were going on your journey and I was so grateful to be able to go on my own as well. I think what was helpful is knowing that you wanted to work on your stuff and you knowing that I wanted to work on my stuff so that we can 
grow in our relationship yeah and work on a relationship and continue to because it's just going to be a never ending process of work but yeah. it's better to do that than to keep all these things underneath and then our relationship doesn't end up working out which we would have probably uh not worked out if it weren't for some good counsel no <laughs> yeah definitely definitely not no, for sure not. just because we weren't two healthy people no we were young young and dumb <laughs> like wasn't that young i was literally in my late 20s <laughs> <laughs> that's still young though yeah it's still young but yeah because also it's like marriage i can't remember if i don't think we were engaged yet when when that ha- when that happened i don't know but in my mind like marriage is supposed to be a place where you can take all of your masks off Mm -hmm. and the person is still accepting of you with just all the different things that, that you struggle with. And so, and I wanted, I wanted that and I wanted to not have shame around the way that I felt about certain things or different things I struggled with or whatever it may be, because I knew that, it's just like we wouldn't ever have a healthy relationship if if I didn't work through those things and you didn't work through your stuff. Right. So it's like, were there some really uncomfortable moments on that journey? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really yeah. uncomfortable. But was it all, has it all been worth it? Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change any of it. No, me neither. And I, I know we'll, co- <laughs> and I know we'll continue to like. Can you see my? Hand? <laughs> Can you see your hand? <laughs> I know we'll continue to work to work on things because yeah. we're not perfect. We're humans. No, uh, I'm pretty close. You're still, getting, you still got a ways, but getting there. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a really good conversation. I didn't know where this was going to go, but yeah. Thanks for sharing everything yeah, that you shared. You, you too. I like these conversations. I think that yeah, it's a, it's a di- this is a difficult one. Like it's a difficult uh, topic. Yeah. I think for a lot of people. Yeah, um, it is good. And there could be like a million different parts to this because yeah, forgiveness for sure. is so multifaceted and like, it's just, again, it's so countercultural. And I think a lot of people don't have great examples of forgiveness in their life. Mm. If we don't grow up, seeing an example of unconditional love and forgiveness, then we don't know how to forgive. We right. don't know how to, how to do that yeah. ourselves. Right. Like the journey of maturing into someone who can be forgiving and who can let things, who can let things go. Um, obviously it's easier said than done, especially depending upon what we experience. Like you were saying about it, everyone has different, there's just so many different things out there and some things are much harder to move oh, past yeah. Yeah. than, yep. than others. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, we know somebody who they're, they were in business with their mom and their sister, his mom and his sister. And it was a million, you know, million plus dollar, um, business multi-million doing very well, business, multi-million yeah. dollar business. And they bounced, and took one point seven million dollars. Yeah, left him with and left him seven with one point seven million dollars of debt. And when he is asked, like, how did you t- like? How did you overcome that? Yeah, a and how did you forgive your mom and your sister? Mm-hmm. Because that's a crippling amount. That's a crippling of debt. amount of debt. That's a debt that makes people consider killing themselves for sure. And his answer was Jesus. He's yeah. like, I just saw how he forgave his apostles for like betraying him, literally dying on the cross for people, mm-hmm. like doing the ultimate sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And he's like, if he could forgive like Judas and yeah. he's Peter who, who denies him and, and curses him three yeah. times yeah. after being his like person. Yeah. The, just like ultimate betrayals yep. of people. Yeah. Then he's like, that, then I can. Yeah. That is so powerful. That's why I think if you haven't had good examples in your life of people forgiving, maybe, maybe you grew up in a family 
where you hold on to things yeah. and it's like, no, this is not fair. And not talking to you anymore. I am not. And, and we are, you know, this person needs to be brought to justice before I can move on with yeah. my life, yeah. you know, and you just kind of hold on to that. If, if that's what you were, you were, you saw growing up. Yeah. I just think, you know, whether, regardless of beliefs, whatever you believe, whether, you know, it, you know, about Jesus, he sets a pretty good example in yeah. the apostles when it comes to that, mm-hmm. uh, with, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I think just reading that and reading about his life and reading of, uh, of how he just walks through life. Yes, he's God. So you're like, <laughs> well, how can I, you know, if he's Never God, but up. he's still in human form. Yeah. I think he still was tempted. He was yeah. he obviously was still tempted yeah. in all these things. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think that's the best example when it comes to, you just saw me pick my nose. <laughs> hey, when you, when it itches, Sorry, it, itches. it itches, it itches. <laughs> and I use my thumb. I don't know why I, I like, cause like, which just shows how big my nostrils are that I can use my thumb. So anyway, we, we just, oh, I just sorry to, <laughs> to, to, um, dog leg off that one. That's dog leg tangent. What's another. It's also a great, I think it's a great, the, the then comparison of Peter and Judas and how they, their trajectories after they both betray Jesus mm-hmm. is a great uh, illustration of like well, what it looks like to forgive yourself or not to, to become una- yeah. unable to, to yeah. forgive yourself. Right. Uh, Cause it's two very different trajectories. Yep. And I think that's a really, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting study of, of the like what can, what can happen when you, when you can't forgive yourself and what can happen when you, when you do. Yep. So we're all going to have to, for, if you haven't had to forgive yourself yet, you probably will. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. T- tell us your secret. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I love you, babe. I love you. Thanks for this conversation. No, I thank you. It. Really been trying to pray, pray intentionally about like what God wants us, wants us to share on here. Then I felt just was feeling pulled to discuss this. So I'm glad you did. I'm I hoping it was a that good conversation, I'm hoping he brings more stuff to my heart as well that we can mm-hmm. talk about. Absolutely. I'm hungry. <laughs> so we always like to end our podcasts mm-hmm. this way. So if you're new here, this is how we like to end our podcasts yeah. by saying goodbye. Honestly, that might be our best one yet. Maybe. So we just pick two notes and see where it lands. Any random and notes. it usually is really bad. <laughs> but that yeah. one was not bad. There was a little harmony. I think it might have been. The second one. Yeah. I don't know about the first one. That was yeah. a little dissonant. Uh-huh. Fun. Toodaloo. Bye.